Do your drawings end up crooked? If so, it's probably because you can't create a freehand sketch in a practical and effective way. In this video, I'm going to show you how to draw or sketch a front view face entirely freehand and step by step. So grab a pencil and paper and come to draw with me. If you have subscribed to my channel, you probably know me from the video about how to draw fur realistically. My name is Lino and in this channel I bring you videos about realistic drawings. In the description below I've left a link showing the new technique that I'm using to create drawings at this level using graphite pencils. It's called CRT and it's completely different from anything you've ever seen before. So click in the first link of the description or here below if you want to see more. Alright, uh, this is the reference image that we are going to use and for this I'm going to create a circle in the center of the paper exactly what I want the drawing to be. So make it as round as possible and if you want to use some object to help you to create that circle you can use it. If you want me to bring a video talking about how to create a perfect circle freehand I can bring it. Just tell me here in the comment section. Okay. Let's start creating some divisions on this circle, just to create some measurements for the face. So to start, we're going to create a center line and a vertical, a little bit longer on the bottom, where we're going to have the mouth, the chin, and sort of a triangular boxy shape for the jaw. Another thing that I'm going to do is to chop off the sides of the circle of this sort of sphere shape. An entry loom is used to do that because the sides of our head are kind of flat. Next, I'm going to create a line for the forehead. Once done that, you're going to realize it's similar to a square. It's not necessarily a square, but in this case, it will fit perfectly. And after that, we'll divide the square in half. That's great. Now let's measure the height of the chin. If you take a moment to observe, the face is divided into nearly three spaces of the same size, from the forehead to the eyebrows, then from there to the nose, and down to the chin. It would be almost perfect if it weren't for one thing. Everyone is different from one another. So in most cases, it won't work. And you might need to make something larger or smaller. But in this particular case, with this photo we've chosen, it will work. To do that, we're going to take the measurement of these two spaces and extend it downward. And here we have the chin. With that established, we can create a jawline on both sides. Here on the top, we're going to have the height of the forehead. Let's create a line for the height of the eyes. And that center line is the height of the eyebrows. And with these measurements, we can now begin to draw the eyebrows. Now on the left trying to keep them at the level of the line we've created. And on this bottom line, we draw the eyes. You might be thinking, but Lino, you place the eyebrows and eyes more to the right. And it's true, I realize that the face is slightly turned to the right. So we'll need to adjust the vertical line in the center. So let's move it a bit to the side. I try to capture the reference image as straight on as possible to utilize the Loomis method in a more simplified manner. However, first let me finish the eyes details, add in the upper lip on both sides, and the iris. I'll go ahead and sketch the nose as well, just need to position it a bit to the side. Every nose has its size and height and you just need to adjust it during the sketch. You just need to draw from the bottom line upwards. I've decided to place it a bit higher to avoid it being too big. Now let's create the outline of the forehead and take the opportunity to draw the ear. Keeping it within the main circle. It's the height of the eyebrow, so let's repeat it on the left side. The size of the ear does not extend beyond the center of the square or the bottom, nor does it extend beyond the boundaries of the circle. But is that a rule for every reference? No. It varies a lot. This method here varies a lot for any reference and so on. So the best tip I have to give you if you want to get good at this is to practice until you understand the construction of the shapes very well. This way, in time and with dedication, it will start to find it less difficult to do this kind of sketch. Okay, now back to the tutorial. I'm going to start making the mouth now and the bottom lip will be touching the bottom of the circle, just like I'm doing here in the video. After that, I'll just reinforce a few lines on both eyes 
and you start doing the hair. The hair will be on the top of the circle. You'll get a sense of where it's going, how high it is and so on. You just have to look at the video and try to repeat the same way as I'm doing. Only practice will help you get an idea of the exact shape of the hair you'll be doing. Some more details for the hair. And after that, I'll take the razor pen and start erasing all those lines that we used to scale the size of the face and the elements of the character. As well as the mouth, eyes, nose, ears and so on. I'm using an eraser pen to erase these lines, but you don't have to use exactly a eraser pen for that. You can use any type of eraser that you have available. You just have to get rid of these lines inside of the face. And these lines mustn't be visible because if they are, it could affect the shading or the painting of the drawing if it's called a pencil drawing. And let me tell you something, no freehand method of sketching is completely precise. It just has to be similar. And this one by Andrew Loomis, you need to practice a lot to understand how the shapes work and to be able to scale it on paper. And an important thing, depending on the reference image, it can be even harder. I'll reinforce some details on the eyebrow and the eyes. Another important thing that I do during the sketching phase of my drawings is to divide the tonal divisions of the shading tones. And of course, always observing the reference image. I don't do it from imagination. And the same way we don't do the other stages of realism from imagination, it's the same during the sketch. So always choose a high quality image reference and keep an eye on the details so you can reproduce it. Now the details on the forehead and it's almost done. I just have to move on uh, to the iris to create some details. So now all that's left is the neck and the clothing. And for the clothing details, Andrew Loomis can't help us. You can try to think about the geometric shapes and try to do this. Paying attention to the shape, sizes. For example, you need to have an idea of where you're going to create a certain line or where it's going to start, where it ends. If it makes a curvature in this area, where in this drawing will it make this curvature? It's not always easy, but I'm pretty sure that if you practice, you'll be able to do it. Now on the right side of the outfit, some details that I see in the reference image here on the shoulder. And the last details on the neck. Less details of the sketch and it's ready. From this point on, you can start shading your drawing. Going through the three stages of rendering a realistic drawing. I mentioned what they are in the presentation of the CR technique. I've made a video that is in the first link of the description or on my Instagram profile. Just watch it there. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and I see you in the next video.